You know those kids that could just learn a language in like five seconds? They just they just like look at one like textbook or something and then bam, they already know it and they can speak it fluently and you're just sitting there in Spanish 3 wondering, what's this boy doing? Well today is your lucky day. We're gonna turn you into exactly that kind of nerd, except for computer science, you know what I'm saying? Hello everybody, I'm Karara, and today we're gonna to be talking about how and why you should get good at coding and how to get fluent at it. Like, like really fluent. Like you could look at another language, you could take one course, learn the syntax, and in a day, you're already good. This isn't a one day thing, of course. Like, the goal is that you should be able to learn languages in one day, but to get there, you have to take a long, long time, and there's a path to get there, and I will give you concrete steps to do it. But before we get into that, like why in the world would I wanna learn this troll coding thing? Like. Who cares? Well, I mean, it's pretty obvious that coding is pretty epic. Like, you can make apps, you can make Minecraft, you can make Facebook, you can make all the apps that we use, you can make anything you want. It's kind of like drawing, right? You can make anything in your imagination and come to reality. Computer science? Coding? It's just another way to do that. And I think it's really cool because you could take like an idea for an app and turn it into a reality. That's coding for you. But even if you're not that kind of nerd who likes computers and wants to build apps and all that nonsense, it's still helpful. Like, as time goes on, coding is just getting more and more sophisticated, and you can use it for anything. Like, if you're interested in bio, and you're confused about a concept, if you're really comfortable coding, you can just go onto your computer, code up something to help you understand it. Like, for example, evolution. Just code up a simulator for evolution. It's epic. There's a bunch of guys who've done it already. You should watch their videos. It's actually pretty epic. But yeah, coding is really cool, and it's not only just, like, something to earn money off of, right? It's also a tool to be used for other things. It's just something that you could add to your abilities list. Like, something that you could do to help yourself out. So now how do you get good at it? Now, I'm gonna be completely honest with you guys. Yusuko is not being good at coding. There's a difference. Yusuko is being good at algorithms. And honestly, you don't have to be that good at coding. You, don't even, you could be like really good at using it. You could be like IOI level and not be super comfortable with like just straight up like coding random like apps and stuff. So in today's video, I'm not gonna be focusing on making stuff, on like making algorithms, on doing Yusuko and all that nonsense. Today I'm going to be focusing on how to get comfortable with coding and how to actually make it so that you're interested in it and able to learn things quickly when it comes to code. So first things first, what makes you comfortable with something? Well, I mean, we're all comfortable with technology, right? Like, I'm assuming that if you're watching this video, you're probably like high school. Of course, there's some of you old people out there, you know what? No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. No offense. So all of us high schoolers out there, and all of you middle schoolers, and all of you young boys out there, you guys are probably really comfortable with technology. We're our IT support for our parents, because they, 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 they don't know what they're doing, okay? Because this was introduced to them, like, way later in their life. So the reason why we're so comfortable with this technology is because we've had it our whole lives, and we've just been experimenting it and using it for everything from our schoolwork to our other stuff, just using it. And that's what made us comfortable with it. So naturally, just doing coding a lot is going to make you better, right? So let's break down the ways to do coding a lot and get better at it. First thing first, get good at typing. I know this seems like a really trivial thing, like, why do you need to be good at typing to do coding? Like, I could just type slowly and I can still code, right? Well, the thing is, if you learn how to type fast, coding is going to be a lot less tedious for you. If it's less tedious for you, you're going to be more willing to put in the time, and it won't be that much of a time sink for you. You're going to be put a lot more of your time into actually making something you're interested in than rather than just, like, tapping like random keys on your keyboard, okay? See, this is how I used to type, you know what I'm saying? Just like two fingers like that. But then, I got pro, and now I could type like a troll. Well anyways, here's some like quick resources in order to like get better at typing. So the one I used to use is like Ken Fast Fingers. It's pretty epic, you just like type. I mean, well, what do you expect of the typing to- ah, Oh shoot, I started already, ah! Gotta go fast. Okay, that was a pretty bad performance, but like, once I saw that red, I just had to do it, you know what I'm saying? But anyways, if you practice a lot on like these kind of typing programs, you get really good at it, right? And if you get really good at it, then a lot of your work that you put into programming is taken away from the actual manual labor and more into like intellectual labor, which is the interesting part. Other typing resources, there's Type Racer, and then there's also Nitro Type. And then there's one other one, which is, uh, I don't know, what is it called? It's the Aesop's Fables one. Oh yeah, just, it's just a straight up, wait no, this is not it, bruh. Oh, JK, this is it. Yeah, typing test, this is the one. So these are the four resources that I used to use, super useful. The 10 fast finger one doesn't have any punctuation, but 
This one does. Super cool. Okay. Now you gotta really fast the typing. You got that speed in those fingers. You got like lightning flashed jeans in them. What do you gotta do? As I said before, like you have to actually do coding, right? And you're not gonna code if you don't have a motivation for it. So first thing first, find a motivation for it. So originally when I was in seventh grade, okay, I hated coding. My brother was like a super fat coder dude and my parents were like, hey, you should code too. Sounds like a great idea. And I'm like, no, it's so boring. Like, why do I want to just type things on a keyboard? They literally gave me a Java textbook and I'm like, what do you want me to do with this? So yeah, I like learned Java because they forced me to. I like do these go bronze, get to the next level. And I'm like, no, I'm not doing this anymore. This is boring. But then in ninth grade, I actually started like getting back into Usico because I learned that like algorithms are actually kind of cool. Like back when I was in seventh grade, I didn't know anything about algorithms and I had no reason to be interested in CS, right? I was just typing random stuff on a computer. It's not very interesting. But once I decided that I want to get better at algorithms, you need coding to code algorithms. So I basically learned a language, applied it to do algorithms, and I thought that was super cool because I was able to turn like this random code into something that I understood and I wanted to make. So if you choose a subject in CS that you're interested in, it serves you as so much motivation to like get this language down. Okay, so examples of what you could use in motivation, right? Algorithms is what I use. You could say making apps, machine learning. There's some good courses on Coursera that I recommended in my uh, intro to machine learning class. There's also web design, there's databases. There's a lot of stuff that you could try out there. All right, so now you found a place to apply your coding skills, which seems a little backward because you don't have those coding skills yet, but yes, let's get to those coding skills. So in order to get your coding skills, you first got to choose a language and the language depends on what your application is. For example, if you're doing machine learning, Python's a great tool. If you're doing just algorithms, then C++ is amazing. If you're trying to learn like the basics behind like Java as a language, which is super useful for ABCS, then learn Java. And in order to learn it, you basically got to look online on YouTube. There's a bunch of people who make courses for all these languages. So just look at one of these guys. For C++, there is a guy named The New Boston. He's really epic. Got some super good CS tutorials. C++ tutorials, sorry. And they're really good if you want to check them out. If you want Java tutorials, there I took a Udemy course, but that costs money. And I'm sure there's some on YouTube, so you could go check that out. So now once you've got one language down, once you're like super, super specialized, like epically specialized, like you know the ins and outs of that language super, super good, and you could code anything in your field that you like, then it's time to start diversifying into other fields. Because once you learn one language and then you start looking at other languages, you'll notice that there's a lot in common. Like a lot of languages have objects, right? There's a lot of object oriented programming languages out there. Then you'll notice that all of them have functions, all of them have methods, all of them have like super similar stuff. And once you get started to see these parallels between programming languages, you start to be able to learn programming languages epically fast, like super, super fast, like Usain Bolt fast, like, I don't know, what's another fast, like snail speed fast. Okay, fine, maybe that doesn't work, but. You know what I'm saying? So the, and the reason why I stress like learning coding languages fast is because I literally went to Berkeley courses and they use different languages in all their courses. Like, okay, so the three most basic courses in uh, Berkeley are CS61, A, B, and C, right? I've already said this. Literally in 61A alone, they use three languages, Python, SQL, and Lisp or something like that. And then in 61B, they use Java. And then in 61C, they use C and they use like a bunch of random languages that like we've never learned before. So in order to do well in college, you have to be able to learn a lot of these languages fluently. And just in general, if you want to be able to do a lot of things with coding, just learning how to be fluent in languages makes it a lot easier to do whatever you want, to express yourself, to like make whatever app you want. So yeah, I hope that helps. It also makes it a lot easier for like in school when you're like trying to do APCS, it helps. All right, that's all I got. Thank you guys so much for watching. I know this is kind of a ranty video. Sorry about that, but I feel really strongly about this. I think that you guys should be fluent at coding. I think it's super cool. So yeah, epic. One last thing. If you guys have suggestions on what videos I should do, please let me know in the comments because like I'm really open to whatever you guys want me to do. Uh, I have a lot of interest, but like I need you guys to tell me what you guys want to see and then I'll be able to do it for you guys. All right, that's it. Sorry, I'm talking too much. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe for more. Thank you guys again for watching and see you guys next time.